Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Acne is a common condition that usually affects teenagers. However, in about 3% of men and 12% of women, it can persist even after the age of 25. When acne becomes persistent and resistant to the usual medications like antibiotics, we need to consider other options. I've already done videos which look at the effectiveness of spironolactone and metformin in the treatment of acne. Today we will consider another adjuvant therapy that may help in those with recalcitrant acne. It's quite a unique agent as it is commonly used for asthma and hay fever. It's called Montelukast. Montelukast is an anti-allergy agent that acts against leukotrienes which are mediators of inflammation. There is some evidence that it helps skin conditions like eczema and urticaria. Let's look at two double-blind studies where Montelukas was used to treat acne. Double-blind studies are the highest form of scientific evidence to prove that a treatment is effective. The first study was published in 2015 and was from Iran. They randomly assigned patients to receive doxycycline 100 mg a day plus 1% clindamycin solution or Montelukast 5 mg a day with 1% clindamycin solution. The total course was 12 weeks. At 3 months follow-up, both groups had a significant effect in reduction of acne severity. There were no side effects in the Montelukast group. This study suggests that Montelukast is as effective as oral doxycycline in treating acne. The second study was published last year and had a larger number of patients with 108 subjects. The design of the study was slightly different. They had one group of 53 patients who received 100 mg of doxycycline plus placebo and another group of 55 patients who received 100 mg of doxycycline plus 10 mg of Montelukast. Both groups also received topical benzoyl peroxide 5% every other night. The study period was again three months. At the end of the study, the inflammatory lesion count and other objective acne scores reduced more significantly in the Montelukast group and this was statistically highly significant. Here is an image from the study which showed good remission of acne after three months. This is another image from the same study which again shows a good response. What is the mechanism of the anti-acne effect of Montelukast? Tissue inflammation is an important part of acne development and progression. Leukotrienes are one of the most potent mediators of this inflammation. This inflammation also encourages the sebaceous glands to secrete more sebum that further aggravates acne. By inhibiting leukotrienes and thereby reducing both inflammation and sebum production, Montelukast could help to control acne. The dosage of Montelukast was different in the two studies. In the first study, the authors used 5 mg a day, whilst in the second, the dose was 10 mg a day. These are the usual doses used in eczema and asthma, so they tend to be quite well tolerated in most people who take it. Generally, adverse effects tend to be mild and infrequent. They include headache, abdominal discomfort, fatigue and rash. No drug interactions have been reported, so it is fairly safe to use with other anti-acne medications. There were a few limitations to the studies. Patient compliance was low and there were subjects lost to follow up which reduces the accuracy of the statistics used to measure outcomes. Also the numbers were low, between 50 to 100 patients. There may be possible confounding factors too as patients use topical agents with the oral treatments in both studies. In conclusion, Montelukast may be used as an adjuvant therapy for inflammatory acne, which is mild to moderate in severity. We need to confirm these findings with larger studies to look at the beneficial effects of Montelukast for acne as an adjuvant therapy. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.